Hi, Journeyers. This is Tony Carnes, your host for A Journey Through NYC Religions. Today, we have uh, Don Eden Goldstein, the author of a new biography of Father Edward Dowling. It's called Father Ed. Father Ed was the spiritual counselor of Bill Wilson, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And Dawn is going to help us uh, understand the deep uh, Catholic uh, parallels between uh, what Father Dowling uh, was talking about to Bill Wilson and uh, the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. Welcome to the show, Dawn. Thank you so much, Tony. It's great to be back on. Uh, uh, Dawn, what, what, tell, take us deeper into the connection between AA and Catholic spirituality. Well, when Father Ed Dowling was told by a fellow Jesuit that there were similarities between the 12 steps and the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola, what Father Ed began to see in the 12 steps and what he would relate to uh, Bill Wilson in his uh, mentorship of uh, Bill Wilson, co-founder of AA, was that uh, within the 12 steps, there's a program for spiritual perfection, because ultimately uh, the 12 steps aren't about recovery from, from drinking. The 12 steps are about recovering one's sanity, one's spiritual sanity. That's why, as Father Ed was really among the first to see, the 12 steps are too good to be kept to alcoholics. Father Ed saw that the 12 steps were valid and, and important for anyone recovering from any kind of a problem. Uh, the 12 steps themselves only mention alcohol in the first uh, step. Uh, I have them at the end of, of my biography of, of Father Ed. Uh, the first step uh, is admitted uh, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Uh, from then on, uh, the steps don't mention alcohol at all. Uh, the second step is came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Uh, the third step is made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Uh, and from there on, the 12 steps have this program, which Father Ed, with the help of his uh, Jesuit friend, Father Marcou, identified as a program that's akin to the different stages of the spiritual life in Catholic spiritual theology. In Catholic spiritual theology, the stages of the spiritual life are the purgative stage, which is the stage of uh, ridding oneself of sin through God's grace. And that is is covered uh, through uh, stages uh, four uh, through uh, through uh, or rather step four of of the twelve steps through step uh, ten um, because the steps go through making a fearless moral inventory and admitting one's failings, seeking God's grace to to uh, remove these failings, then making amends. Uh, the second stage of the spiritual life is the illuminative way, which is the way of walking with God and learning from God the path of virtue. And Father Ed uh, saw, th saw that um, partly through some of the um, purgative steps that go into making, making a, a amends. Um, making a amends is the, the beginning of, of really the, the upward path. And then step 11, in particular is illuminative and sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. Uh, it goes on. Uh, but then also in steps 11 and 12, Father Ed saw the um, highest stage of the spiritual life, which is the unitive way, which is the, the, the way of the spiritual life through which uh, someone seeks never to be separated from God. Uh, and especially in carrying the message, 
uh, which is in the 12th step, uh, Father Ed saw this unitive way because ultimately um, when one is in union with God, one wants to give what one has as uh, as St. Uh, Dionysius uh, said, or pseudo Dionysius as, as they call him, um, the good tends to diffuse itself. The highest good wants to give of itself. And that's what we have in the 12th step. So uh, Father Ed saw these similarities and helped Bill uh, receive what anyone would want to receive from a spiritual master, namely uh, discernment, being able to discern uh, the lesser good from the higher, highest good. Um, so uh, thankfully, Father Ed had a great spirituality of discernment that he had been educated in through his knowledge of the uh, uh, spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. And it was St. Ignatius's rules for discernment that Father Ed particularly shared with Bill to help Bill to help alcoholics to better uh, discern as they were on the upward path. So, you know, people have this mistaken idea uh, that uh, people, uh, if they have uh, problems with uh, addiction or depression or any kind of mental issue, uh, that they can't be a Catholic mm -hmm. saint. And so Catholics who believe that they're called to sainthood, which we are, we're all called to, to holiness, you know, that this can really, you know, disturb Catholics thinking, oh gosh, I must not be able to be a saint or be holy because I have this addiction or depression or what have you. But in fact, we have many Catholic saints and, and people who are on the path to Catholic sainthood uh, who have suffered from addiction or some sort of mental issue uh, right now on the path to to recognized sainthood we have matthew talbot who was an irish layman so not a priest uh, who uh, was a recovering alcoholic um, matthew talbot has been declared venerable which means that he's been found by the church to have practiced virtue not merely on an ordinary level but on a heroic uh, level. Uh, so, uh, so now, um, if Matthew Talbot is, is shown to, um, to be in heaven, but through, um, God answering miracles through people asking Matthew to intercede for them, if, if, uh, a couple of miracles come to pass through Matthew Talbot's intercession, then he'll be, uh, an alcoholic known by the church to be in heaven. But actually, uh, we already have certainly more than one alcoholic among the saints. Um, alcoholics can claim um, can claim uh, Saint Monica, the mother of Saint Augustine, who realized she had a drinking problem as a young woman because uh, one of the servants in her household uh, pointed out uh, that she had a drinking problem. And so uh, Monica stopped drinking and she's recognized as a, a, a great saint in heaven with whose feast day is on the calendar. Um, uh, Augustine was this incredible um, writer of the city of God, also his confessions that are sort of classics in both Western literature and in the church. His mother was an alcoholic at one time. Yes, uh, Augustine talks about that in his confessions, um, and so, and so, you know, the the point be, being uh, that um, saints people are not prevented from sainthood because they either um, because they had mental issues or issues with alcoholism, or um, or because they suffered abuse. I wrote a book my piece I give you, Healing Sexual Wounds with the Help of the Saints, uh, that uh, is filled with stories of saints who suffered abuse, including sexual abuse and other kinds of, of, of trauma. Uh, so the point with sainthood is, is, is not, you know, where you've been, but where are you going? Are you, are you on the upward path? And uh, Father Edward Dowling, you know, the subject of my book, Father Ed, uh, he 
uh, found in the 12 steps of AA, a wonderful map of the upward path, the path to sanctity. Father Ed truly believed that anyone who was practicing uh, the 12 steps of AA, whether they were Catholic or not, whether they were Christian or not, was on the path to sanctity. In fact, he was so admired the alcoholics who were on this path that he called himself, uh, you know, the sort of the undeserving outsider. Uh, the underprivileged. That was the his underprivileged. Because he didn't have, he, he didn't, ha a, a, at least that particular uh, over bearing uh, oppression of uh, alcoholism in his life uh, and he admired that they were able to go on this path and become better people and and better and better people um, and that he admired them so much uh, as an exemplary for him a priest and of course he used um uh, the, uh, some of the AA uh, spiritual uh, Ignatius Loyola's principles in overcoming um, smoking and also uh, uh, overeating. And so he felt very emphatically, he felt empathy for uh, people that were alcoholics or were on this path. Much like that if we look at a saint who had his struggles, uh, or Monica, St. Monica, who had her struggles, and yet she goes on this path to uh, be exemplary of both for her son and for other people up to today. And that's right. that, I think that's what he saw that uh, that was common, that it puts you on a path, yes. uh, uh, perhaps even to sainthood. Yes. Um, uh, and that that's right now, Father Dowling is there. Uh, you suggested uh, that that people in St. Louis should take a look to see if Father Dowling is uh, not only a, a great counselor, comforter, and man, a priest, but maybe was a saint uh, that was among us. I have, have, have you had much response to that uh, call for people in St. Louis to reflect on that possibility? Well, I've met with the Archbishop of St. Louis, Archbishop Rosansky, and uh, he was perfectly agnostic about the possibility of, of <laughs> introducing Father Ed's cause for sainthood, which I, I think in a way is as it should be because it should come from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly I had the impression that if people wrote into Archbishop Rosansky saying that they had a devotion to Father Ed, uh, that he was open uh, to the idea of introducing Father Ed's cause for sainthood. Uh, in the church's uh, laws for the canon law for introducing saints causes, they have to be introduced either in the, in the city where the person lived or in the city where the person uh, died. Uh, so uh, Archbishop Rosansky, as the bishop of St. Louis, where Father Ed spent his life, would be the one uh, to, or one of the bishops, uh, to have the uh, power to introduce his cause. And, you know, it, if it's God's will, it'll it'll happen, but it, the movement has to come from the grassroots. If, uh, if you reflect on, you, you, you've been with Father Dowling for over a decade, how has that changed your life? How has he changed your life? Father Ed, his story has changed my life tremendously, really, uh, because um, he's helped me to realize, you know, to use a cliche, you know, not to make the perfect the enemy of the good. One of Father Ed's favorite sayings was, we cannot do more than we can do. Uh, I think too often I beat up on myself uh, for, you know, my limitations. Uh, whereas for Father Ed, his whole spirituality uh, was one of, you know, trying to do as much as he could do. And then when he hit the limitation to really offer that limitation and his feelings of 
frustration at hitting that limitation to offering that to God in union with Jesus' passion, realizing that Jesus in his passion, in his agony, experienced the utmost of human limitations and turned it into an offering. So has he helped you? Have you done a, a Ignatius, St. Ignatius Loyola's spiritual exercises to get beyond your perfectionism? <laughs> I haven't asked about that. I haven't asked God for that help specifically while making the Ignatian spiritual exercises, but I have made the eight day version of the exercises and I've found it very helpful. Okay. Uh, how, and, and what do you expect you'll be? Yeah, I, I think I heard a, a rumor that you've been studying canon law. Is that right? Yes, that's, that's correct. Uh, I've been studying towards a degree in canon law to add to my doctorate in sacred theology. And I'm very close to finishing now. I should finish out in it, it, uh, probably by the time, around the time this airs. And so do you have a, an idea for your next book? Or... I, I do. I would love to write a biography of Father Louis Toomey, who was another Jesuit uh, who was uh, important in the 20th century. In this case, uh, Father Toomey was very important in civil rights. I'm still looking to see if someone else is already working on one. If if that's the case, then I'm sure I'll find something else to write about. But I, I do enjoy having a cottage industry of writing about uh, 20th century American Jesuits who did important things. And thankfully, there's no shortage of those. You know, one thing that you mentioned, in, uh, and this brings up but one thing that you picked up on Father Dowling, it was his... Uh, intense interest and consistent interest on uh, bettering the treatment of African-Americans in the United States. And, and, and even a uh, uh, little, little campaign to create a monument for uh, one of the African-American martyrs uh, uh, or in history, a Dred Scott, who was uh, the Dred Scott decision, a terrible decision by the Supreme Court, that basically said that African-American slaves were property, so they didn't have the rights of a human being. They couldn't be free by definition. And he was buried in St. Louis, is that right? Yes, so Dred Scott, at the time that uh, Father uh, Dowling learned about uh, where he was buried uh, in the 1950s, um, Dred Scott's grave uh, at Calvary Cemetery was unmarked. And when yeah. Father Dowling discovered that it was unmarked, and by this point it was almost 100 years since- It was just a, a, basically a, a, a mound of dirt and rocks on top of his grave. Well, it was in a cemetery. So, yeah. you know, there was grass, but um, there was nothing to mark the spot. Mm -hmm. And Father Ed, was distressed at this and he um teamed up with dred scott's descendants and advocated for them and started a national fundraising campaign to place a marker uh, on dred scott's uh, grave and uh, ev eventually um one of the family that owned the plot the family of the descendants of taylor blow who had who had freed Scott, um, they eventually uh, placed a marker on Scott's grave, but um, Dowling was absolutely uh, the impetus behind this because he was so scandalized that uh, this uh, former slave who had suffered so much should be resting in an unmarked grave. Now, is, is I, I don't know if you know, but is is Dred Scott still buried in Calvary Cemetery? Or Yes, he still is. And his great-great-granddaughter, Lynn Jackson, has, has had a, a campaign to place uh, a larger um, monument to replace the, the uh, gravestone <laughs> that was... The family uh, that uh, yes. uh, owns, I guess, the, the grave or something, uh, the, uh, the former masters uh, didn't want it. They wanted it. It's small yes. marker. <laughs> a small that's, that's absolutely right. Yes. Uh, so, so the 
the woman who was uh, a descendant of, of Blow, who uh, had the marker placed, she wanted something small and tasteful. She was, uh, you know, very much from like a kind of a Mayflower type of family that didn't like ostentation. Um, and so even though her uh, wishes were, you know, not in, in any way meant to, you know, diminish Scott's importance, you know, the, the monument that was put up in 1957 um, really was too humble given the uh, importance of, of Scott for the civil rights uh, struggle. Uh, so now a more fitting monument is being put up uh, by Scott's great, great- Well, Father great Dowling, uh, uh, I believe that, well, at least we got something. And uh, yes. uh, and so he, he he won that battle in, in many ways. And, uh, and, but that was not the only uh, place that he had concern for African-Americans. He would include them in his, uh, groups that he organized for uh, AA, for helping families, the Cana groups. Uh, he would uh, try to uh, introduce them right at the very beginning that they would be part of the groups. And this was back in, you know, along the 40s, before the big civil rights era. So it was a, a remarkable, uh, he, was a, he was a troublemaker, all right. <laughs> he, certainly, he certainly was. Holy troublemaker. <laughs> A holy troublemaker. That's absolutely that's absolutely right. And I just feel so blessed to have chosen Father Ed Dowling as my subject. You know, they they say you know be careful who you do your dissertation on or who you <laughs> do your book on because you're going to be you know living with that subject for the rest of your life. And I really couldn't pick a better subject to live with than the life of Father Ed Dowling, S.J. This is uh, Tony Carnes, your host for A Journey Through NYC Religions, with uh, Dawn Eden Goldstein, who is the author of a new biography of Father Ed Dowling, called Father Ed. Be sure to take a look at the book, but also take a look very carefully at how AA principles line up with the uh, spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola. It's a revelatory uh, uh, exercise that she does filled with antidotes and insight and wisdom like that. Thank you. Good night. Good day.